Hello everyone and welcome to this week's video. I'm Sarah and we're in my living room. It's a cold, cold January day and I'm just bundled up here trying to stay a little bit warm. Anyways, I have been editing videos and I have finally pieced one together. So I'm really excited to show you. So you're gonna have to stay tuned. I'm using some new glaze combinations I haven't tried before and a glaze that I have never used before. I had ordered some uh, from my pottery supply, actually a few different pottery supplies that I use because it just seems like there are supply issues everywhere right now. Um, so I will dabble in order from this place and order from that place in order to get everything that I need. Anyways, it's a glaze that I have been really wanting to try and I am so excited to share with you my results. I've used it on uh, my pottery supply house the dark um, or the black clay they call it a black clay it fires to a rich toasty dark kind of like almost like an oreo cookie that kind of brown you know a really dark 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 brown color it is absolutely gorgeous and it is stunning with these glazes that i put it with so stay tuned i think you're going to enjoy this you can get some of this stuff done in one video or i might have to break it up into a few Probably a few. Trusty banding wheel. Big sponge. Bucket of water. Brushes. Um, definitely some lustrous. So when pots have been maybe sitting in your studio for a minute or are fresh out of the kiln, you really need to wipe off any dust that may have settled in the grooves. It's, it's not enough to just blow it off. So you do want to use a, a wet sponge and to really take your time, wipe away all that debris. It will really make a difference in the way that your glaze will actually adhere to your pots. I like my wax to be the consistency of like skim milk so I add it to some warm water and then uh, you know mix it up it just goes on so easily you can see how quickly it it is absorbed into the bisqueware I find I have more control you do have to be mindful though because it's runny uh, more runny because of, of it being fluid so you do have to be mindful that it doesn't run off the pot or go somewhere you don't want it to be because uh, you can't really clean it up once it's there you'd have to refire it to the bisque fire So I'm using Blue Surf Glaze and uh, it was a dry glaze and then you add water and you put it in a, bu a bucket. Um, it's for dipping and or pouring your glaze. It, uh, it has a slightly different consistency than a brush on glaze. So it is easier to actually use this when you're lining something like a bottle. So that's why I typically will use a, uh, a format like this. It's a nice rich deep blue and uh, I'm going to pour it inside. You want to leave it inside the bottle for, I don't know, like I count to about five and then I'll spill it out and rotate the bottle in order for to make sure that all sides of the, the bottle on the inside get covered in the glaze. And then I'll wipe away, like you can see here, wiping away any excess glaze where you don't want it. Uh, this little guy, I'm also dipping the outside. So not only is the inner part of the bottle being um, glazed in the blue surf, but so is the outside, just that top portion. Um, I'm gonna layer another glaze on top shortly. Now what you could do instead of trying to wipe away glaze is you could actually put that wax resist on the bottle itself where you want it uh, to be instead of actually having to wipe it back. Um, I didn't really go in with a plan uh, uh, to do that in the first place. So, you know, it's, it's one of those things. Sometimes you just kind of go with it. You get an idea while you're glazing and you just go with it. So here is sandstone. So this is another amazing glaze. It's a crystal glaze. So it has little tiny crystals that will bloom in the kiln and create lovely kind of runny, drippy effects. It's quite pretty. So I'm actually layering it on top of the blue surf. I am 
pouring it. Uh, I find that with this particular phase, you want to make sure you get the crystals sort of dispersed uh, nicely. And how I do that is by pouring the glaze over and then uh, just trying to get the base part of the glaze on where I want it. And then I kind of hold back some of the crystals. So you can see there all those crystals and I will sprinkle it on and I know it looks like it's a lot and if I left it this way, boy, it would be a disaster. I then just kind of pour back um, some of the crystals, I pour them off and then you're left with just the perfect amount where you want them so that you get your desired effect. So if I were to brush these glazes on, I would suggest you to use uh, two coats of each, so two generous coats of each of the blue surf as well as the sandstone in order to create a, a comparable effect uh, that, that I will get from actually dipping and pouring these glazes. I will get some nice movement out of them. I would also, regardless of whether you brush it, dip it or pour it, you want to wipe back your glaze if it's anywhere on the pot that you don't want it to be at the at, you know in the firing because once it goes in the kiln that's it it will fuse to the pot so a uh, good practice is to wipe it back just to be safe some alabaster with a brush, of course my trusty fan brush, and uh, I'm putting it on sort of in a dabbing application and just sort of very random in order to add interest. It's going to create um, different thicknesses of the glaze and then it'll also kind of run and want to move in with the sandstone and the blue surf and it really I think will create some really interesting effects. about what's happening here. Ooh, okay, this is cute. This was blue surf with um, sandstone poured on top. And I think I put a little bit of alabaster with it too. So I like this, that's cute. That'd be Look at these, that's so pretty. Look at this. So this is on the, again, the black clay and I haven't done this combo on the black clay. So I was a little worried, but this is another little cruet. So you can put this on your table with salad dressing and then people can put that, what, how much they want on their salads or just keep a little bit of oil beside the stove. Um, so this is a uh, blue surf that was poured and or actually dipped. I dipped it to about this point here. And then I um, used, I poured um, sandstone on top and then I added a little bit of alabaster to it. Isn't that pretty? And the texture. I like when it does that, when it swells. It's so nice. So remember, it's blue surf on the inside. Poured that. And now it is going to be ancient copper on the outside. seen how beautiful this looks up on like dark against dark so I'm hoping that uh, I get some equally impressive results a little bit of my sponge there and you know me I always leave clay I shouldn't say always most of the time I leave clay especially when I have colored or rich colored clays I'll always kind of leave something exposed 
so that's the intention with this. So I'm going to probably bring the ancient copper down somewhere here and hope I'm going to get some good movement out of it. I'm going to put on like, oh boy, I don't know. What does it say? Let's say it says apply three, clo three coats of glaze to cone 04. So yes, this is 04 bisque. I bisque it to cone 04. So I might even go four coats. these glazes today how exciting is this look at all that goodness right there see that we gotta get that incorporated look at that color now for those of you who are not potters and are watching this um, this doesn't fire like this it's not like paint um, glazes do very magical things inside the kiln at you know 2200 degrees Fahrenheit it uh, it's quite the process so always remember that when you're gonna put glaze on you want your brush to be absolutely loaded totally saturated you never want that brush dragging. It should be very fluid and run nice and smoothly. That's, I mean, it, it, I think when I was first learning how to glaze, I, I didn't know how much glaze, what's a coat? I don't know. So uh, to, for me to, to kind of share with you, a coat, your brush will remain wet. It will remain, it'll slide on your pot while you're actually spinning it or applying it which is a good indication of a, of a good single coat. And to coax out some glaze drips, I'm going to create sort of a ebb and flow in that line with the glaze. You want to have low points. That is where the glaze is going to naturally begin to run and hopefully continue to run and give a really good drip. So I'm trying to create a really, just a very organic, very, you know, a natural, not too thought out shape. It's just sort of going to up and down in an undulating fashion. And that will hopefully give me some really pretty drips. The um, ancient copper. I never used it before. And oh wow! 
Oh my God, that is so pretty. Oh, look at that. Look at this. My goodness, you guys. Look at it on this black clay. See, now that fired well, it's hot. Ooh, this is the um, Pottery Supply House there, black clay. You can hear it tinging still. Look at that, that is just four coats of ancient copper. Oh my goodness, that is incredible. Okay, very happy with that one. I'm interact, but I like it. Look at this. So this is just four coats of ancient copper. So this is Pottery Supply House, not Potter's Supply House, Potter's Choice ancient copper still looks so dark down here eh? But i'll have to look at it in playback when i'm watching it to edit i will take photos as well but look at that guys oh my goodness and i like it on the texture that is probably my favorite piece out of this whole glaze kiln opening i i like it i like it a lot <laughs> guys think did you like it I really hope so I was really thrilled with these uh, results and I wanted to share them with you so you know if you do try any of these hey comment below let me know how they turned out you know if you've had some successes with any of my other combinations from my other videos again let me know I answer each and every comment that comes my way uh, my community is growing so thank you for all for subscribing if you haven't subscribed yet hey, please consider doing that. Share, like, and of course, introduce yourself because I love hearing what part of the world you're from. Um, so until next time, take care and I'll see you soon. Bye for now.